Okay, so are you ready for this? We are diving deep into fungal intelligence, right? Sure. Like, have you ever thought about something without a brain being smart? Right. We're yeah. talking fungi, those massive networks under the ground, under our feet, everywhere. Yeah. Could they actually be seeing the world around them? It's a really interesting question, and it really challenges, like, how we define intelligence. Yeah. Because we're so, like, brain-centered <laughs> in our thinking. Totally. Um, but fungi are showing us that there might be other ways to perceive and interact with your surroundings. It's like they're playing a whole different game with a different set of rules. Holy. And we're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. So this research team from Tohoku University and Nagaoka College in Japan wanted to test this whole fungal site thing. Right. They were working with a wood decay fungus. It's called Phenericata lutina. Okay. And it actually already has like a reputation for being pretty clever. Oh yeah, P. lutina is a very cool fungus. Mm. Um, previous studies have shown that they can do things like, remember, they can learn, they can make decisions. Oh, wow. So it's a really interesting fungus to study when you're looking at something like shape recognition. So it's like the smartest kid in fungus class. Yeah, like they pick the right one for the job. Exactly. So what they do, do they like hold up flashcards to it with different shapes on them and see if it reacted in any way? Not quite, but they did set up a pretty cool experiment. Okay. So they grew this fungus on these plates and then they arranged little blocks of wood in a couple of different shapes, a circle and a cross. Okay. And the really important thing here, they made sure that the distance between these wood blocks was the same in both of the setups. So like a puzzle for the fungus, yeah. but they weren't trying to trick it with distance, just with the overall pattern. Exactly. Yeah. They really wanted to hone in on whether or not the arrangement of the wood affected how the fungus grew. And did it. Yeah. Oh. So P. Latina kind of surprised everybody again. What did it do? When they put the blocks in a cross shape, the fungus grew really differently than it did in the circle. Really? Like, how so? So they looked at how much the fungus was connecting to the different wood blocks. Oh, so like how much it was grabbing on. Yeah, exactly. And in the cross arrangement, they were really interested to find that the fungus had a much stronger connection to the blocks that were furthest from the center. Oh, interesting. Yeah, at the very tips of the cross. So it was reaching out further when it sensed the wood was in that cross pattern. That's what it seems like. Yeah. And they actually called those outer blocks outposts and suggested that the fungus might be making more connections there so it can maximize its foraging, its resource transport. That makes sense. If I'm a fungus and I want to eat that wood, I want to make sure I've got a good grip on those outer pieces. Yeah. What about the circle? Did it just grow evenly all over the place? So the connections were more evenly distributed in the circle setup. Which makes sense, given it's a circle. Right. But here's the thing. The very center of the circle was completely bare. There was this little fungal free zone right in the middle. So it was like, too crowded, everybody stay off the dance floor. Yeah. And the researchers think that the fungus might have sensed there were enough resources within the circle and decided, I don't need to waste my energy growing into that central zone. Wow, clever fungi. But how do we know it was actually doing anything different based on the shape? Could it just be random? Yeah, so that's where the researchers took it a step further. Okay. They measured how much wood the fungus was breaking down in each setup. So they weren't just looking at where it grew, but how much it was eating? Exactly. And this is a wood decay fungus, right? Right. That's It's the job. It breaks down wood. Right. So if there were different decay rates, depending on the shape, it's a pretty good sign that it's responding to what it's seeing, mm. to the arrangement. Okay, this is blowing my mind. So we've got fungi making decisions about where to grow. Now we know they're adjusting their eating habits based on the shape of their food source. Are we saying fungi can recognize shapes? Are we going to have a fungi art exhibit? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. It's not about conscious thought. Okay. But this research shows that fungi might have a way of recognizing spatial arrangements. They're sensing and processing information about their environment and then changing their behavior, their growth, their wood decay activity based on what they sense. Okay, so maybe no fungal art galleries anytime soon? Not yet. It's still recognition. That's a big word to use for something with no brain. Yeah. How can it sense and react without like the neural wiring? It's a really good question. It's one of the biggest mysteries in biology, I think. Right. Um, and this is where the idea of basal cognition comes in, right? Okay. Intelligence doesn't have to look like ours. Okay. Fungi, they might not have brains the way that we think of them, but they do have these amazing networks of hyphae. Right. 
and they can send information through those networks in ways that we are just starting to understand. So instead of electrical signals going between neurons, it's using, what, chemical signals? Pressure waves? Yet yeah, you're on the right track. Think of it this way. Each hyphal tip, the growing point of the fungal network, it's like a tiny sensor, and it's picking up all these cues from the environment around it. Okay. Things like nutrient gradients, how much moisture is in the soil, even the presence of other organisms. So they're like little fungal explorers sending back reports from the front lines. Exactly. Well, I love it. And all of this information is getting relayed through the network, and it's probably not through electrical impulses the way that our brains do it. Oh, okay. It could be a combination of chemical signals, electrical potentials, even physical changes within the hyphae themselves. So it's like the entire fungal network is one giant interconnected brain. Kinda, yeah, like a decentralized intelligence spread out through this entire organism. Wow. And that's part of what allows fungi to do some really remarkable things. They can yeah. navigate mazes, they can find the best food sources, they can even communicate with other organisms, all without a centralized brain calling the shots. So you're telling me these fungal networks, these seemingly simple organisms, are capable of things that we, with our big, complex brains, are still trying to replicate in our technology. Exactly. Wow. Like, if you look at the field of biocomputing, okay. scientists are increasingly interested in fungi as inspiration for developing new types of computing systems Wow. that are more adaptable, more resilient, right. more energy efficient than traditional computers. So fungal-powered laptops? Sign me up. Right. That's an eco-friendly upgrade I can get behind. But seriously, what makes fungi so well suited for that? A few things. So for one, their decentralized network structure makes them incredibly resilient. Okay. You can damage one part of the network and the rest can often compensate and keep functioning. Oh, wow. They are masters of adaptation. They can thrive in so many different environments and they're super energy efficient. Right. They can achieve remarkable computational feats using a fraction of the energy that our electronic devices require. It's like nature's already solved some of our biggest technological problems and we just need to look down, or maybe I should say look down at our feet. Exactly. Right, this is incredible. Like if fungi can do all of this already, what does the future hold? What else are we gonna discover about these incredible organisms? It's really exciting to think about. Yeah. There's still so much we don't know yeah. about how fungal networks work like, if we could unlock the secrets of their communication pathways yeah. or understand how they process information at a cellular level, right? those are the questions that keep my colleagues up at night. It's like cracking a code that's been around for millions of years. Totally. Like, what could we do with yeah. that knowledge? I mean, the possibilities are huge. Yeah. We've already talked about biocomputing, but right. imagine using fungal intelligence for bioremediation. Right. Cleaning up pollutants, restoring damaged ecosystems, yeah. or developing new medicines. They have all these unique chemical compounds. So fungi could help us solve some of the biggest challenges we're facing right now. Absolutely. And I think even beyond those applications, just recognizing intelligence in these organisms. Yeah. In fungi. Yeah. It really shifts our perspective. Totally. It makes us rethink our place in the world and appreciate the incredible diversity of life on Earth. It's humbling. Yeah. We think of ourselves as like the top of the intelligence pyramid, but nature has been doing its own experiments for millions of years, coming up with stuff that we can't even fathom. Totally. And as we continue to study fungal intelligence, we might start to question not only what it means to be intelligent, but what it means to be alive. Wow. So for those of us ready to jump down this fungal rabbit hole, where do we even begin? What can we explore after this deep dive? Um... Well, you could start with the research that we've been talking about today, yeah. the paper by Yu Fukasawa and their team in fungal ecology. Okay. It's a great place to really dig in and see the specifics of the experiment. Perfect. We'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. What about any books, anything we can like curl up with and get lost in the world of fungi? Oh, for sure. I always recommend Merlin Sheldrake's book, Entangled Life. It's just this beautiful exploration of the fungal world, all the ways that it connects with life on Earth, including us. Okay, that's going straight to the top of my reading list. And on that note, I think we've all earned a break. Anyone else suddenly craving mushrooms who knew they could be so thought-provoking? Right. It's really amazing. To fungi and to the endless wonders of the natural world, always reminding us that the most incredible discoveries are often hidden right in front of us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those deep dive requests coming. Totally. So they're like little fungal explorers sending back reports from the front lines. Exactly. And all of this information is getting relayed through the network. 
Okay. And it's probably not through electrical impulses the way that our brains do it. Okay. It could be a combination of chemical signals, electrical potentials, even physical changes within the hyphae themselves. So it's like the entire fungal network is one giant interconnected brain. Kind of, yeah. It's like a decentralized intelligence spread out through this entire organism. Wow. And that's part of what allows fungi to do some really remarkable things. Yeah. They can navigate mazes. They can find the best food sources. They can even communicate with other organisms, all without a centralized brain calling the shots. So you're telling me these fungal networks, these seemingly simple organisms, are capable of things that we, with our big complex brains, are still trying to replicate in our technology. Exactly. Wow. Like if you look at the field of biocomputing, okay. scientists are increasingly interested in fungi as inspiration for developing new types of computing systems wow. that are more adaptable, more resilient, more energy efficient than traditional computers. So fungal powered laptops, sign me up. Right. That's an eco-friendly upgrade I can get behind. Right. But seriously, what makes fungi so well suited for that? A few things. So for one, their decentralized network structure makes them incredibly resilient. Okay. You can damage one part of the network, and the rest can often compensate and keep functioning. Well, well. They're masters of adaptation. They can thrive in so many different environments, and they're super energy efficient. Right. They can achieve remarkable computational feats using a fraction of the energy that our electronic devices require. It's like... Nature has already solved some of our biggest technological problems, and we just need to look down. Yeah. Or maybe I should say look down at our feet. Exactly. Right. This is incredible. Like, yeah. if fungi can do all of this already, what does the future hold? What else are we going to discover about these incredible organisms? It's really exciting to think about. Yeah. There's still so much we don't know about how fungal networks work. Mm -hmm. Like, if we could unlock the secrets of their communication pathways. Yeah. Or understand how they process information at a cellular level. Right. Those are the questions that keep mycologists up at night. It's like cracking a code that's been around for millions of years. Oh, like. Like, what could we do with that knowledge? I mean, the possibilities are huge. We've already talked about biocomputing. But imagine using fungal intelligence for bioremediation. Right. Cleaning up pollutants, restoring damaged ecosystems. Yeah. Or developing new medicines. They have all these unique chemical compounds. So fungi could help us solve some of the biggest challenges we're facing right now. Absolutely. And I think even beyond those applications, just recognizing intelligence in these organisms, in fungi, yeah. it really shifts our perspective. Totally. It makes us rethink our place in the world and appreciate the incredible diversity of life on Earth. It's humbling. Yeah. We think of ourselves as like the top of the intelligence pyramid, but... Nature has been doing its own experiments for millions of years, coming up with stuff that we can't even fathom. Totally. And as we continue to study fungal intelligence, mm. we might start to question not only what it means to be intelligent, mm. but what it means to be alive. Wow. So for those of us ready to jump down this fungal rabbit hole, where do we even begin? What can we explore after this deep dive? Um, well, you could start with the research that we've been talking about today, mm. the paper by Yu Fukasawa and their team in fungal ecology. It's a great place to really dig in and see the specifics of the experiment. Perfect. We'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. What about any books? Anything we can like curl up with and get lost in the world of fungi? Oh, for sure. I always recommend Merlin Sheldrake's book, Entangled Life. Mm. It's just this beautiful exploration of the fungal world, all the ways that it connects with life on Earth, including us. Okay. That's going straight to the top of my reading list. And on that note, I think we've all earned a break. Anyone else suddenly craving mushrooms? Who knew they could be so thought-provoking? Right. It's really amazing. To fungi. And to the endless wonders of the natural world always reminding us that the most incredible discoveries are often hidden right in front of us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those deep dive requests coming. That's totally fine. It's like we went from zero to 60 on the weird science scale. Right. We started talking about if fungi can see shapes, and now we're questioning, like, what does it mean to think? It's true, though. It's like the further down the rabbit hole we go, yeah. the more we realize we don't know. Yeah, totally. And the more it changes how we see the world. It's like this whole hidden world right there under our feet mm -hmm. doing all this crazy stuff, and we're just starting to scratch the surface. Absolutely. So if fungi have already evolved to do all this, what else are they capable of? I mean, it's really an open question. Right. There's still so much we don't know about how fungal networks actually function. Right. Like, imagine if we could really unlock the secrets of their communication pathways 
or um, yeah. or figure out how they process information at like a cellular level. Right. Like it's one thing to see it happening, but another to know how it works. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And these are the kinds of questions that keep mycologists up at night. I believe it. It's like cracking a code that's been around for millions of years. Exactly. What could we even do with that knowledge, though? I mean, the possibilities are kind of mind boggling. Right. We talked about biocomputing, but imagine fungal intelligence for like bioremediation, oh, okay. cleaning up pollution, restoring ecosystems that have been damaged. Or what about new medicines? They've got all these crazy chemical compounds that we haven't even begun to explore. So fungi could actually help us solve some of the biggest problems that we're facing. They really could. And I think beyond the practical applications, there's something even bigger here. Okay. Just the fact that we're acknowledging intelligence in these organisms and fungi. Yeah. It really changes our perspective, right? Totally, yeah. It makes us rethink where we fit into the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And it helps us appreciate just how diverse life on Earth really is. It's humbling. Totally. We walk around thinking that we're at the top of the food chain in terms of intelligence, but nature's been running experiments for millions of years, coming up with stuff we can barely even imagine. Yeah, and honestly, as we keep peeling back the layers of fungal intelligence, Yeah. We might start to question not just what it means to be intelligent, but what it means to be alive. Wow, those are some big questions for a Tuesday afternoon. So for those of us who are like ready to go down this fungal rabbit hole, where do we even begin? What can we check out after this? Well, you could always start with the paper that we've been discussing today by Yu Fukasawa and their team. It's in fungal ecology. Okay, perfect. It's a great place to dive into the details. Love it. We'll link to that in the show notes. What about books? Anything we can curl up with and get lost in the world of fungi. Oh, for sure. I always recommend Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Okay. It's such a good read. Really explores the fungal world and how it's connected to everything else. Awesome. That is going on my list. And on that note, anyone else craving mushrooms who knew they could be so thought-provoking. Right. It's wild. Well, cheers to fungi and to the endless wonders of the natural world, right? Always a good reminder that the most amazing stuff is often right in front of us, hidden in plain sight. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those big questions, and keep those deep dive requests coming. Yeah, absolutely. See you next time.